Hello and welcome back to the How to Get an Analytics Job podcast. So if you are just starting your job search or if you are currently, you know, right in the midst of it, this episode is for you. We are going to talk about the typical process that you go through when you're interviewing for analytics jobs. I've actually got one of my apprentices here, Gavin, who is going to break down his experience. So Gavin, what has been your experience of the typical analytics interview? Um, so an interv- analytics interview, um, especially for the bigger companies, will probably take you at least three interviews. Mm-hmm. First interview may be with someone within HR or someone like that. So they just have their screening questions that um, a you know manager or uh, someone someone head of a department may have asked them to make sure just as far as the screening process goes. They're probably not going to know much about the position other than those just base technical questions. Um, second interview is going to be probably with an actual person on the team that you may be applying to um, or that manager. Mm-hmm. Um, that interview is they're just going to ask you more of your general questions. So that's going to be probably a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. They're going to go through the process of what's your previous experience? Um, do you have any analytical experience? Do you have any coding experience? Um, can you speak to that? You know, your typical interviews that you're going to get. Last interview is probably going to be technical. So if you make it past the third, you, they'll probably say, after the second, they'll probably tell you like, hey, we'd like to bring you back for a third within this third that we're going to you know, give you a task. That task could be anything within coding languages. It could be just for an, a lot of, in, well, for the entry level of job that I interviewed for, it was just within Excel. So your base level functions that you'll see in Excel, they want to make sure you know. Now, um, it really just depends now how this interview will go. Some may just ask you to share your screen and walk them. They'll give you a problem and have you walk them through it mm-hmm. and they'll watch you do it. Others may kind of dip out from the Zoom and then just come back within like a specific amount of time. Like, hey, this interview is two hours. I'm going to give you an hour to figure this out. Come back in an hour, talk about it, and then kind of line out the rest of this. So it just depends. But that's in my experience. That's been what that looks like. Gotcha. All right. So follow up question. What have you struggled with the most, or maybe what has been the most intimidating to you? Um, I think going through the process is I don't have much coding experience. So mm-hmm. um, with going, when you go through an analytics or analyst interview, there are two different types of analysts to be one very technical within coding and everything like that, and then there's one towards maybe some of your data visualization and just your general business acumen. They say both say analysts, but there's two different positions, so you don't necessarily know. Yeah, what see, they that's are. it's that's what's unfortunate about the analytics space is that mm-hmm. it's a little bit nebulous right yes. now, and part of that's it's kind of a new space to be in. Yeah. So it's almost like the Wild West. Yes. I think most analysts or analysts look towards, uh, that most people think about at least look towards more of the data science background. Right. Just to have that level of experience when you go through and on one of these interviews, it's good to have that experience. So I would mm-hmm. say kind of have that experience going into it. If you don't, however, be open and honest about not having it right. <laughs> um, and say like, hey, I'm learning this or something like that. In my, in my analyst interview, he asked me specifically about SQL. I have no experience in SQL other than some brief um, interaction on LinkedIn and Khan Academy. So I just told him that, but I was interested in learning. This is the process and how I had my schedule set up to mm-hmm. figure this out. Um, he seemed very confident with what I was telling him at that point, but um, we always talked to her. I spoke towards my Excel experience because that was what I did have. I didn't want to speak towards what I didn't have as much and then like – Keep some, leave something on the table by not telling him, hey, I have this experience. So, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it sounds like, well, okay, we need to caveat this in okay. that you're applying for an entry-level job. Mm-hmm. So any of the skills they list out, mm-hmm. they don't expect you to be a top one percenter uh, in terms of a SQL developer. Exactly. You're not like, you don't need to be a rock star. You just mm-hmm. need to kind of know the fundamentals. Or it sounds like in this situation, which... Did that did that lead to an offer? Or did you get to the next round? Um, I got to the third round. I just okay. because I accepted another offer, I just turned down the other right. interview. Okay, so it sounds like that was not a deal breaker for them. That that is a required skill that was in mm-hmm. the job posting that you didn't have. Exactly. But it sounds like you interviewed well enough. That they're like, hey, Gavin's sharp. Like, yeah. He may not have the skill now, but look, we could send him to a three week boot camp or have him take this course. And get up to up to speed because mm-hmm. you're not going to be doing some like crazy backflip somersaults right. in SQL mm-hmm. for an entry level job. It's 
it's that's not entry level at that point. And well, actually, I should I should caveat that some jobs are are not well defined, and unfortunately, mm-hmm. you may get thrown in the deep end, mm-hmm. which I, which some of my students have. The upside of that is that you're going to be in the cooker, and you're going to either quit mm-hmm. or you're going to acquire that skill. Right. Um, and then I think what was cool is one thing that he asked me about is because I have our apprenticeship program on my resume. So he asked me and I told him kind of going into it. Um, and this is just how, kind of how I learned. So I told him going into it, I had no um, data visualization skills as far as Power BI, Tableau and anything past some basic level Excel. But within this three month process, I was finished this. But how you prove that in this interview is you say, hey, I got a portfolio right. and this is what we did. And then, and then show him that. Now, again, in my specific interview, I didn't get a chance to kind of show him that, but it is on my resume. Yeah. So it is something that I can speak to if it ever gets to that point. And I think they're, they're, they're oftentimes impressed and like, oh, he went from zero knowledge to no knowledge in three months. You mean um, zero knowledge to some knowledge? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> he Excuse actually me, went zero, negative. Yeah, <laughs> negative knowledge. He um, unlearned, which is impressive. Uh, <laughs> He's higher. <laughs> exactly. Uh, zero to some within three months, we're like, okay, so we can teach him something as yeah. long as he has these base level skills. Um, and then don't be discouraged about whatever is in the job description, as you were saying, because right. they don't expect you to know anything with an entry level role. However, as I said, you want to have it, you want to have your pivot points when they bring that up in the interview, because they will ask you that at some point. Right. So understand your weaknesses mm-hmm. and be able to kind of tell a good story of, to make up for it mm-hmm. or, or not necessarily to make up for it, but just at least have a way to explain it. Exactly. That is cohesive. Which it sounds like you did, because you, they said, hey, tell me about your SQL experience. You're like, well, I don't have any, but I'm currently learning this. Mm -hmm. And actually, to double down on that, they believe you're going to learn it, because you just learned Tableau and built an entire, like, in-depth portfolio over a three-month period. Exactly. So you've already showcased the work ethic and your ability to learn. Exactly. And then you can speak towards the company that you actually work with. Not only is Silvertone... um, a company, you know, you're the CEO of that company, but the company we partner with, multi-million dollar company. You mm-hmm. talk about multi-million dollars, speaking to a CEO, a CFO, you talk about the different KPIs that they were looking for, um, and then how you kind of put that in Power BI. Those are, if you have zero SQL experience, they're going to be at least intrigued about what you did and right. how you got to that point when you start mentioning those different things. Yeah. Because, it, I mean, essentially with an analyst job, they're just trying to figure out how to optimize the business. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's what you did in a different way, but that's what you did. Right. So, you know, that can help kind of push you forward if need be. Gotcha. All right. So let's recap. So there are three different typical steps. We totally went down in the weeds, which I, I'm, I'm happy. Like, I, right. I, I, I think you've got some really good advice. and I, yeah. I didn't want to pull you back. I was like, let's let Gavin go. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the focus of this episode is the three different phases of an interview. So typically, number one is you start with the phone screening. Mm-hmm. So here, all you're doing is, are you in line with who you said you are in your resume? So don't try to smooth the person. Don't try to impress them because that person's not technical. They're most likely from HR and they're just trying to validate you know, is, is this your resume I, are, are, is what it is? Yeah. They're trying to figure out, are they being catfished in a professional setting? Exactly. So that's how you get through phase one. Phase two, you said behavioral, right? Uh, yes. So phase two is a typical interview. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, the behavioral interview is um, you're going to be working at that company if you get hired for 40 hours a week. So you, one of the big tasks there is to show that, you know, you're not super annoying mm-hmm. and you're hard to be around exactly. you're like you can be disagreeable if it's productive but don't be so disagreeable that you can't work with anybody and then the third phase is a technical interview and that's where you know actually i was about to say that's where you show if you actually have the skills it shows where you have actually have the skills or if you don't do you have a pretty good alibi as to number one why you don't and number two how you can chart a path towards building this mm-hmm so I, f- I feel like that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you so much for your, you, you've got such great anecdotes. I, I, I really appreciate it. Also, thank you so much for tuning in. I uh, hope you learned a little bit more about the analytics interview process.